hey everyone this is Siddharth and today in this video I'm going to show you how we can prepare a ML model for classifying wine as good or bad in terms of its quality so by doing so we can determine which physiochemical properties will make a wine taste good so first of all before starting I'm assuming that you guys have some basic knowledge of ML algorithms and uh, are pretty comfortable with Python okay so here we're gonna divide the project into six different steps um, which involves importing packages, loading dataset, plotting graphs, pre-processing of datasets, creating ML model and finally after creating the ML model we are gonna fine tune its hyperparameters so that we can increase the accuracy rate accuracy percentage so here we are gonna import our packages okay i have done something okay yeah so for handling and manipulation of the data sets we we'll, we are gonna use pandas and numpy which are kind of you can say very fundamental and necessary library or package for each and every project which we make in ml and for the plotting purpose i'm going to use matplotlib and seaborn library and for the rest of the operations for in our ml model we are going to use scikit-learn okay so now that we have imported our packages we are going to load our data set okay i have already downloaded the data set from the kaggle site i'm going to drop the link in the description for this site okay so here we can see that the shape of our data set is 1559 and 12 which means that we have 12 columns and 150 uh, 59 rows of data okay so here we can see that quality is our dependent variable which we which will be our output and uh, rest of the columns apart from quality is our independent variables which we we'll, we are going to use for uh, classifying the wine as good or bad so now that we have uh, loaded our data set as well we are going to check uh, some basic things about our data set so by using dot info i can see that uh, yeah total number of entries of 1559 and we can see that there are no null or missing values in our data set in every column the, the total number of entries and the number of entries which are not null or missing are the same so we can say that it we have no null values or and we can see that there are no string values okay so we need not worry about the pre-processing about the strings or the missing values and we can just start di directly start plotting the graphs so i'm gonna here i'm gonna plot graphs between the independent variables and the dependent variables one by one i'm gonna plot each and every graph so since the data set we can see is not very complex i think a simple bar plot will do the job for i'm giving us more insight to the data distribution and we can maybe find some patterns okay so our first plot is between the acidity and the quality of the graph okay so we can see that there is no fixed pattern like uh, if it's three uh, if it's a rating of three then it's around 8.2 or something and if it's of four it decreases then at five in it increases it increases and then after seven it again decreases so there is no fixed pattern so i don't think it's of much use to us so we'll just move directly to the next one which is volatile acidity yeah yeah volatile acidity and here uh, we are plotting box plot using the seaborn library and here we can see that there is almost uh, there is a decreasing there's a downward trend okay so i'm just gonna add a text over here so we can see that uh, so downing trend yeah 
तो द नेक्स्ट वन इज सिट्रिक एसिड वाइन इज मेड आउट ऑफ फ्रूट्स सम ऑफ ग्रेप्स एंड सम ऑफ अदर अदर फ्रूट्स सो दे कंटेन सम सिट्रिक एसिड एंड अ गुड क्वालिटी ऑफ वाइन विल कंटेन लेस यू कैन से मिक्सिंग एंड मोर काइंड ऑफ प्योर फ्रूट्स और प्योर सिट्रिक फ्रूट्स सो दे हैव मोर एसिडिटी ऑफ आई मीन मोर सिट्रिक एसिड इन दैम सो अगेन आई विल जस्ट एड अ कमेंट विच इज and so the next plot is between we have done fixed acidity volatile acidity citric acid now next is residual sugar okay so i'm going to execute and here we can see that again there is no fixed trend in this no fixed pattern nothing you can just say it like nothing inference like in this two graphs so again this is not of much use to us we'll just uh, ignore it and move on and yeah here as i think you must be also noticing it by now there is a downing trend next is a uh, sulfur dioxide sorry sulfur uh, sulfur dioxide okay i have misspelled here Sulfur dioxide and here it increases, then it decreases again. We can't just say that it contains some specific pattern. It's not of much use. And again, moving forward, yeah, same with sulfur dioxide. Yeah, it we got no pattern. now uh, the amount of sulfates has an inc- a kind of you can say a little bit increasing trend very little but yeah it is there and the alcohol versus quality okay so you can say if we just ignore this one this is like the difference is very less in this so we can say that like there is an increasing trend I think yeah i'll just add it the ph value like yeah again there is a very very slightly downward trend slight downward trend yeah i'm going to move to the next step which includes the so i mean setting up of our dependent variable okay so dependent variable we have seen that we have uh, values in integers which were visible but in the task the our task is classifying them as good or bad okay so first of all i want to see that what are the values uh, yeah so i can see that okay we have values ranging from 3 to 5 uh, 3 to 8 so here i can just say uh, we can just uh, i mean take a value 6.5 and uh, we can just classify the values uh, i mean the quality value of quality 3 to 
the values above 6.5 will be considered as a good wine the rating the quality rating and the quality rating be below 6.5 any quality rating will be considered as bad wine okay so here i have applied this condition to each and every value so here uh by one and zero i mean that one refers to good and zero refers to bad okay so any value in the quality column above 6.5 will be assigned one and all the values below that will be assigned zero okay so after executing this which our column now looks like this okay Yeah, so after assigning this i think that i don't know what the error was like at that time so right now i can see that i have uh, you, you can see that i have classified it as good or bad wine i mean zero for bad and one for good and we can see that a major portion of our data set contains bad wine okay bad wine bad wine and I mean 217 wine is classified as good and the rest of all of them are classified as bad wine so uh, we have plotted and now after I think this is all the preprocessing that we need and after this I am just going to move ahead to I mean separating our data set into testing and training data sets uh, train data sets right okay. and I am just going to show you how my x looks so and again or y we have zeros or ones and now so we have our dependent and dependent values so next we need is our uh, like splitting up into data sets of train and test data sets so we have got uh, 320 test values and 1279 train values Okay, so if we look closely then the scale of the columns I mean the range in which the value lies are not same and the for especially for column fixed uh, acidity free sulfur dioxide so total sulfur dioxide are like there is a drastic change like these are in 0 to 1 0 to 1 0, uh, 0 to 3 maybe but these are ranging in 2 0 to hundreds so there's a drastic change in, in the in the range and this will just make more difficulties for our model and will in turn just decrease our accuracy so we are just gonna uh, use standard scalar which will just scale our data set values numerical values into same scale okay that is 0 to 1 okay so uh, we have scaled them now we are ready for creating the classifiers that is algorithms okay so uh, for this project i'm gonna use random forest classifiers and support vector classifiers okay so so first of all i'm gonna you uh, create a instance for our random forest classifier which is rf regressor and i'm gonna take uh, roughly 100 estimators okay so after creating this instance i will fit the regressor or you can say train the model on x train and y train okay which is our training data sets we use for training and after my training is done i will make the model predict some values for the testing set okay which will which i will compare to the uh, values that we have already in our uh, set I mean the dependent variable that is this one I'm gonna compare it with this and then we can see that how much accurately it classifies or you can say uh, it classifies as good or bad so here I'm gonna use confusion matrix a matrix for like as a for checking the accuracy and how much better it is uh, how uh, how it is performing on our data set and here we can see that 256 values are classified as correctly and 29 values out of this out of uh, what is this 
47 are classified wrongly okay that's not a problem like okay so here we can see that the total number of predictions are 320 and we have made 283 correct predictions and 337 wrong predictions so for this i just use a simple length function which is len and then inside i just pass this numpy array and then i just used the sum function and it will return me it will calculate the sum of all those values which returned true for this expression yeah so for those values which matched are the correct values or correct predictions which my model made and for those which didn't match which is this expression will return uh, will be added to the incorrect prediction part and if we use this this and this i can actually find out the accuracy like how accurately it is classifying which is the correct values so uh, our uh, random false classifier is 88 88.5 percent accurate that's actually not bad so we'll just try it you know it late in this video and now i'm just gonna support vector classifier okay, we are just uh, we are now we'll be creating support vector classifiers and uh, same like above uh, I'm creating SVC regressor as an instance of the support vector classifier that which is SVC and I'm gonna fit and predict using the train and test sets okay and uh, for these also I'm gonna plot confusion matrix and it is kind of good kind of better than before one yeah i don't know maybe and okay it's a little bit bad uh, it is little bit less accurate than the earlier one so now that we have our models completed with the predictions and the accuracy i'm just gonna try tuning our parameters so first of all i'm gonna tune my support vector classifier and for that i'm going to use the grid search cv in this in the param variable we need to enter the parameters i want to tune in this param variable i'm going to use which is c kernel and gamma these are some parameters in the support vector classifiers and here i have not used any because i just used the default ones so here if I execute this and after i have created successfully created a grid search cp like instance i'm gonna train it using the train okay so now it's it has been trained it has trained itself and using the best params we can see that if c is uh, c is the penalty actually the error penalty if it is 1.2 gamma value is 0 0.9 and kernel is rbf then we will get the best predictions and it increased from 87 percent to approximately 90 percent which is kind of you can say good approximately 90 percent it's good and uh, for the random first classifier i'm gonna use cross validation score this validation score the estimator will contain the model variable or the you can say model instance which holds a uh, model instance and x and y are the parameters i mean x is the uh, x is independent and y is dependent and uh, cv Repos uh, represents the iterations okay so if we see okay so it improved from 88 percent to 91 percent approximately 91 percent you can see 
So this completes our model and let's see. So with this we complete our first very basic ML project and if you like liked what you just saw then do like comment share and subscribe and uh, don't forget to press the bell icon for future notifications.